This selection of stretches is offered as a guide only. They should not replace the program and advice given by the child's primary therapist. Contractures develop because not all muscles around a joint will weaken at the same time. As a result of this, boys will develop compensatory postures and ways of walking. The tendo Achilles is often the first to tighten. Gastrocnemius and soleus muscles insert into the tendo Achilles. Stretches should be introduced early and incorporated into the daily routine. Active self-stretching may be possible. The usual sports stretch against the wall is easy for most boys. The gastrocnemius muscles can be stretched first. It is important the toes point forwards and are turned in a little as well. The heel is kept firmly on the floor. With the front leg bent, the boy leans towards the wall until a stretch is felt in the back of the calf. A stretch for soleus can be done in this position, but this time both knees are bent. The boy leans into the wall, bending the back leg until a stretch is felt in the lower part of the calf muscle. His heels must remain on the floor. Passive self-stretches can be done on a rocker board against the wall. Positioning is extremely important. The feet should be slightly pigeon-toed to ensure the tendo Achilles is being stretched. A self-stretch for the hamstring group can be incorporated into the daily floor activities when playing or reading. Note the knee should be straight and slightly out to the side. Another popular hamstring stretch is done by lying on the floor in a doorway or against a post. The boy moves as close to the wall as possible with his knees still slightly bent. He then straightens his knee against the wall and holds this position, keeping his hips on the floor. When performing manual stretches, the important points to remember are to position the child so he is well supported and comfortable. Stabilize the joints which are not being moved. The intensity of the stretch should be sub-maximal and should never cause pain. Hold the stretch for as long as possible as a prolonged stretch permits the muscle spindle to habituate to the new length and allows the lengthening reaction to occur. Overstretching is to be avoided as the muscle responds by contracting further. If the boy actively resists, a lengthening contraction occurs which may cause further damage to the muscle fibers. Manual Achilles tendon stretches should be taught to the family very soon after diagnosis. The child lies on his back in a comfortable position. The operator cups his heel firmly in one hand and rests the sole of the foot on her forearm. She stabilizes above the knee with the other hand and exerts a downward pressure on it to keep it straight. She then pulls firmly on the heel while pushing the sole up until a stretch is felt in the calf. A small towel may be placed under the knee to prevent overextension. If resistance to the stretch is encountered, first bend the knee, then stretch the heel cord, and while maintaining the stretched position, straighten the knee. To stretch the hamstrings, the boy is again positioned comfortably on his back. The operator places the ankle of the leg to be stretched on her shoulder and stabilizes the other leg by pressing down on the knee. She also ensures that the moving leg is kept straight. She then rocks forward, using this movement to perform the stretch. Stretches for the hip flexors in the early stage are best performed with the child lying prone. The operator cups the bent knee in her hand, allowing the ankle to rest on her arm. She places her other hand firmly on the boy's buttocks. She then pulls the leg up and inwards towards the other leg while exerting downwards pressure on the bottom. 
This maneuver will also stretch the iliotibial band, which sometimes tightens in the early stage, especially when a wide base stance is adopted. When there is obvious tightening and stretching is difficult, it is often easier to perform the stretch with the child in side lying. In this method, the operator stabilizes the pelvis with her knee and free hand. The top leg is taken back into extension, and with the knee extended, downward pressure is then exerted on the leg. In later stages, stretching the hip flexors may not be possible in prone, and an alternative position in side lying may be more comfortable. Notice how the operator stabilizes the lumbar spine with her knee. This localizes the stretch to the hip. Alternatively, the stretch can be performed in the Thomas position. She makes sure that the opposite leg is well flexed onto the abdomen to fixate the lumbar spine. When boys are no longer walking, it is advisable to add a stretch for tibialis posterior, which tightens when walking ceases. Particular attention is paid to the upper limb when boys are no longer walking. Contractures are likely to occur in the elbow flexors, forearm pronators, wrist flexors, and the long finger flexors.